okay, it's uh, been about a week since I did a video on anything, um, and this has been a busy week for me. I uh, went to the theater twice, so I have at least two movies to talk about, and uh, among other things. So uh, first off, on Tuesday, I went with a friend of mine uh, to go see Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. Um, and uh, I love Kenneth Branagh. Let me let me point that out. Kenneth, I think Branagh is a fantastic director. I really do. So I was curious as to how he would uh, he would approach you know a fairly linear action film, which I haven't seen all of his movies. Mostly, really, I've only seen his Shakespeare adaptations, like Hamlet and Much Ado About Nothing, which were I mean Hamlet was fantastic. Um, so I was I was curious as to how he'd pull it off. And, um, I, th I think he pulled it off pretty well. Even though, um, this is a really standard action movie. There's nothing, there's no surprises, there's nothing innovative or interesting here that's gonna have, that's gonna make you want to throw your money at it, really. Um, and I saw this in IMAX. Not IMAX 3D or anything, just, you know, regular IMAX 2D screen. And it's not worth it. It's really not worth it because the IMAX, I mean, at my theater here, um, an IMAX 2D ticket is like 15 bucks. And it's so not worth it. Um, yeah. It, if, if you do want to see this movie, um, catch a matinee of it, really. That's, you know, that's, that's my two cents. That's my one sentence review. Catch it at a matinee for five, six bucks, you know. Um, and you won't be disappointed, you really won't, if this is your thing. Um, and, and it's not entirely my thing, I'll be the first to point that out, like, just pretty standard, straightforward action films, action thriller films, especially like, like, cyber action thriller films, aren't really usually my thing, they're just so dime a dozen. Except for, if you could classify Skyfall. And I love Skyfall. I absolutely adore Skyfall, just because I think this movie is that genre doing absolutely everything right that it possibly can. I really, really love Skyfall. I can't stress that enough. So there are ways to pull off this genre just perfectly and just make it amazing like that movie. Um, and I haven't seen any of the previous Jack Ryan films. Um, I know there was... And I haven't read I haven't read any of Tom Clancy's novels yet either, even though I actually have a few sitting in my in my closet. But I haven't haven't read them yet. Um, I know there was Patriot Games with Harrison Ford. I haven't seen that. I know there's one with Ben Affleck, and I I know it's kind of an odd title, and I can't think of. I've been trying to think of the title for that movie for like for like days now, and I just keep forgetting to look it up, and I can't think of it. And I haven't seen it, and I think, I swear I saw it pop up on Netflix instance, so maybe I'll give it a watch, just out of curiosity after seeing this now. Um, I know there have been a few Jack Ryan films before this, with Jack Ryan being portrayed by different actors, I think, each, every single time. And uh, this time it's Chris Pine, of course, and he's really good. I like Chris Pine. Um, obviously everyone knows him from the new Star Trek movies. And as Kirk, you know, and I think he's a fantastic Kirk, and I think he really holds his own as as a frontman for an action film. And I know there was an, I know there have been one or two other, there have been a few other movies that he's been had to carry mostly on his own. Well, to be honest, actually, both times I'm thinking, um, there were two main actors. There was uh, Unstoppable that came out several years ago, back in like 2009, I think. And I haven't seen that, so I can't say, and I honestly can't remember who his co-star was. I can't remember. Um, and then there was, there was a comedy that he was in with, shit, was that Tom Hardy? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm just remembering that wrong. I just remember, this this means war. That's what it was. It was like a year ago, two years ago, maybe. I just heard it. I heard it was crap, so I didn't go see it. 
but um, I think Chris Pine is a really likable guy, and he's a fantastic lead actor. He he does his job perfectly fine here in in Jack Ryan. Um, and Brana as the as the Russian villain is great, and he's a lot of fun to watch. He really is, and um, he's just one of those characters that kind of steals the show. Even though it's just it's it really is just Brana kind kind of being just stoic, stoic Kenneth Brana. He really isn't facially. He really isn't um, you know stretching his acting limits or anything. Right? He doesn't he doesn't get into anything. Um, anything out of the ordinary for him here, really. Really, it's just him putting on a menacing Russian accent, and it works. It really works, because he's Kenneth Branagh, and he pulls it off. He really does. Um, Kira Knightley is the love interest for for Jack Ryan here, and she's fine, and I like Kira Knightley. I really do. Um, I noticed something, and it bugged the hell out of me through the whole film. And this sounds so stupid, but she never closes her mouth. I don't know if it was a weird acting tick. I don't know if Brana. I doubt Brana directed her to do that. But she just. She has this kind of open, glaze eyed look of like. Anytime she's not talking, her mouth just kind of hangs open. And I've seen other actors do that in movies before. And I've heard other people say it too, that it bugs the hell out of them, and it bugged the hell out of me. It's something so nitpicky and stupid and pointless. And I do like Kira Knightley, I do. I don't know, it just really bugged me. I can't put my finger on why, or why that would even be. I don't know, I've never seen her, I don't remember her, well, I haven't seen Pirates of the Caribbean in a while. But I don't remember that standing out to me in, in in any of those movies. So, um, and I just saw her in Pride and Prejudice, so I don't, and I don't remember that standing out, so I don't know, it's, it's odd, it's really odd. Um, but she's fine, she's, she really, she's really fine. And, um, there, there is kind of an odd running joke that, um, she, sort of a running joke, but it is kind of played for laughs, but um, she she keeps thinking that Jack, as he's as he's going off to different countries and um, getting into, you know, getting into these, uh, you know, tussles with, with uh, secret, with secret agents, with Brana, with the Russian government, um, she keeps thinking that he's just going away because he's cheating on her. And she brings this up a few times in the movie, and then at about the halfway point when he revealed, you know, spoilers, I guess, but it's kind of obvious, uh, he reveals to her that he is, that he's working for the CIA, that he's an undercover agent for the CIA, and her, her response is, oh, thank God, you aren't cheating on me after all. And that's kind of the punch, and it's kind of a punchline? I don't know, it just kind of fell flat for me. It, just felt sort of off. Um, any other things? I'll, I'll try to give like a brief plot summary. Like, it seems it, it makes me feel so stupid. But usually, mo like action movies like this, where it's like, where it's like, oh my god, this foreign government is doing this thing, and we have to stop it. CIA agent, go do it. Like those, those screen, those screenplays for me, those plots just go in one ear and out the other, really. They always do, and I always try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And it's not because it's particularly bad or anything, it's just I've heard this so many damn times. But, um, uh, the hook here is that, which I actually thought was kind of interesting and just how ridiculous it is, um, the Russian government basically just wants to completely bend over the world's economy and just screw it by somehow manipulating the US dollar just like like inch by inch 
to where somehow other countries will... I'm, I'm not an economist, obviously. I, I'm not... I, I, this is not my forte, explaining something like this. I don't even know if... I don't know if... Like, I couldn't even tell you if it, if it makes no sense. It could be... I mean, it could be complete bullcrap. But I wouldn't be able to tell because that's not my, not my field. Um, but basically, they want to manipulate the U.S. dollar somehow so that all the world powers will, will, and that Russia will somehow just, like, completely deplete the U.S. currency, and then, so that Mother Russia will get all of the glory and all of the money, somehow, from all the world powers. It, it's explained so fast, and it's explained, like, once and it's never really touched on again. And they're just kind of like, okay, here's the thing, go. Because, um... Yeah, Kevin Costner is in this too. Um, if you saw the trailer, you probably saw him. Uh, and he actually is a, main, a major secondary character in this, in this film. Um, he's a CIA operative who's, who's helping, helping Jack along. He's sort of a, you know, a senior, senior operative. I've never been a Kev big Kevin Costner fan. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that he's a better director than he is a r not writer. He's a better director than he is an actor, I think. As an actor, he can be really bland. And yeah, he's okay. He's fine. He's just he's just Kevin Costner being Kevin Costner. He doesn't do anything interesting. You know, he doesn't really have all that many memorable lines or anything, he's just kind of, he's just kind of there, he serves his purpose, you know. It's that sort of movie. Because I, I don't, it wasn't that it was bad, it wasn't bad. I don't regret seeing it or anything, I regret paying 15 bucks for crappy IMAX, just so I could get a full screen, the, the product placement, I pointed, I actually pointed this out to a professor of mine the other day, just, and he thought it was kind of funny. The product placement in this movie is really obvious, and I know... Um, people, you know, people harp on that now, and it's, it's kind of a, it's just kind of a thing. People are, I mean, people are used to it. Product placement is bad. Product placement is really obvious, and it's really, and it's really bad, and it's really in your face. This is, um, product placement here is for Windows Phone. It, it was, I think it was just seeing it on an IMAX screen really drove it home that, uh, you know, Jack holds up his Windows Phone. Windows Phone, you know, up to the the full screen, you know, up to the camera lens, and he's swiping through the apps, and he's texting, he's texting Kira Knightley, and it's, you know, very obviously the Windows Phone um, text message system on screen, it's taking up, and it's full screen, and then he pulls up his Windows tablet, and he holds it up, and it's the entire screen is his Windows tablet, and he's, you know, he's flicking through apps, and he, he pushes an app, it's, it's very, very, very obvious that Windows, um, you know, got some, got some good endorsement out of this film. And, I don't know, it's not that it really bothers me, it's, you know, I know, I know companies, you know, major studios have to do that to get funding because movie budgets are ridiculous. And, um, I, I know, they have to. And it wasn't, like, you know, Man of Steel, bad. I know people really pointed that out because it was really, really obvious where Superman is punching people through a giant Sears and it's, you know, the Sears logo gets like full screen and then they punch their way through a, through an IHOP and it's, which is very blatantly brazened as an IHOP and it's just IHOP logo everywhere, pancakes, you know. It's not that shameless. It's shameless, but it isn't, like, that just, just, um, cringeworthy, really. It's just kind of there, and it just stays for a, a few, and it's there for a, a couple shots. It is funny, though. It's really funny, and I hate that studios have to resort to that, but I understand why they do, because budgets are insane, and, and, 
and in, and for advertising also. You need it for advertising because you can have tie-in commercials with major companies like like Windows. You can have tie-ins with Windows and you know they try sweepstakes things like that. Usually things like that, especially for movies like this, like just straight kind of kind of formulaic run-of-the-mill action films. Um, they usually get that that very blatant product placement that's like slapped onto slapped onto every consumer good. Um, they usually get that treatment and I'm guessing this had kind of had the same thing from the movie. Um, there's really not much I can say about it. It's just, it's a really standard, not subpar, but just really, really standard action movie that's made watchable by Chris Pine is a good lead actor, and Kenneth Branagh is a fun villain. Other than that, there's really not anything to recommend from it. I mean, Branagh is a fine director, but there aren't really any scenes that stand out as like, oh my god, this is beautiful, or this is really well done. Um, really, it's just, it's just, I like Chris Pine, and I like Kenneth Branagh as the lead hero and villain. That's really the only thing I can say about this movie, like, if this doesn't sound interesting to you at all, catch it when it hits DVD, you know, don't waste your time in the theater. If it sounds like something you'll enjoy, go catch a matinee of it, totally, go, go see it. Um, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't say pay full price for it, I really don't think it's worth that. Um, but you'll have a, you'll have a fine time, and that's Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, that's really all I gotta say. Don't pay IMAX. It's not worth it.